Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and we're almost into Christmas season where everyone looks for those Black Friday sales. But the thing I'm pretty sure that you want is a television that performs well and you can get it on a budget. So today, we're gonna take a look at this TV right here. This is the Hisense U6N, and I think this is gonna be one of the hottest sellers for Hisense, mainly because it has Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos support, and it's mini LED. So in this video, we're gonna get out of the box and I'm gonna give you my first impressions. Let's get into it. This U6N is available in a 55, 65, 75, and an 85 inch, but just keep in mind, all these are VA panels, except for the 75 inch is a ADS IPS panel. So it might have better viewing angles, but not sure about the contrast because I don't have one in the studio. Like all the Hisense models in the United States, this one is powered by Google TV, but if you live outside the United States, it might be powered by Vita. You also have Apple AirPlay, Apple HomeKit, and Chromecast, so you can stream some content over to it from your mobile device. This line of TVs also have full array local dimming. And local dimming is a function inside your television that helps give you better contrast by basically having different zones where it can control the black levels of the television. Now, according to display specifications, if you go with the 55 inch, you're looking at 160 local dimming zones. If you go with the 65 or 75, you're talking 240 local dimming zones. And if you go with the 85 inch, you're looking up to 512 local dimming zones. It has the ULED technology, and this is a QLED television. It has the high view engine, and what this does is uses AI to make sure that all the signal looks great on it. You also have Gaming Mode Plus, and this is going to have VRR for all you people who want to get that smoother gaming action. Filmmakers Mode, and to clean up those 24 second movies, it has a motion rate of 240. All right, let's go ahead and get this out of the box so we can see what it looks like. So we got the fee out of the box, they're made out of plastic, unlike the U7N and U8N, which are made out of metal. Get this little baggie right here. It comes with the power cord, some battery short remote control, and the screws for the feet. And this is the remote control that comes with it, and it does have the backlights on it, but it's the same one that you're gonna get on the U7N and the U8N. And I like the fact that Hisense always put this cool cardboard on the front of their screens. It's got some cushion over here, and this keeps it in good shape while it's getting shipped. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at the bottom of it. First of all, here in the center, there's a press button that you can use to get through some basic menu settings. And this does have hands-free Google where you can turn the microphone off and on. There's some stereo speakers at the bottom here, and it does have two different positions where you can mount the TV, and I'll measure that for you. As far as the inside, we're looking at about 27 inches. And on the outside, you're looking around 46 inches and this is the 65 inch model but i'm not sure on the other sizes but i want to show you this tv because this is the one i have take a look at the back of it it reminds me of the u7n except for you have a subwoofer on that particular model now it does have screw holes so you can mount it on the wall and as a hack you can take these screws out and you can match them up for most wall mount brackets on this side of the tv we have your standard power cord and you can add a long one on it just in case you need it there's some ventilation over here as well. And on this side of the TV, we have two USBs. These are USB 2.1, reset button, headphone output, which is very rare. With adapter, you have an AV input for really old devices. And you have three HDMIs here, and all of these are HDMI 2.0. There's an eARC, so you can connect it to a soundbar, and a ATSC 1.0 tuner. And there's an Ethernet input, fiber optic output, and a fourth HDMI 2.0. After getting everything set up, one thing I want to show you is that the speed of this interface is extremely fast. And you won't have to worry if you're flipping through your different channels that you're gonna get that delay that you get on some TVs. That's something that you're not gonna have to worry about on this U6N. Next, we're gonna take a closer look at some of the settings and on the full review, we'll go over this a little bit more, but I'll just show you some of the highlights. Now, one of the great things about this TV over a lot of Google TVs that I reviewed on this channel is that they don't have this automatic setting. So, it will default at standard format and that's good for 1080p. But if you plug in devices and you're not getting 4K, you would have to move to enhance, but this TV will detect it most of the time. There's also plenty of picture settings like under general, you have standard sports, and this puts the TV in different modes that's set up by the manufacturer to make sure 
that you get the best picture quality every time. And if you're not sure, you can always use this automatic setting, which some people don't like, but I don't mind it myself. You also have control over your local dimming zones and you have peak brightness where you can make the TV extremely bright or you can dim it down. But this TV does have a maximum of 600 nits of peak brightness. Another feature I want to show you is that this TV is set up for calibration. I'm not going to be doing that on this video, but you can see you can go in here and fine tune all the different colors if it's not to your particular likings. Another thing I want you to know that you cannot play two sources on this TV. And what I mean by that is playing the TV speakers and a Bluetooth device or having a fiber optic output. You'll have to select whatever, which one that's going to work for you with your particular setup. Now, if you go into gaming, you have some features like your contrast level, black levels. This is where you turn on the auto low latency. It is also designed for a PC and it does have a high refresh rate that smooths out video while playing games. Now this TV is powered by the newer version of Android TV, which is the 12th version. And some TVs still come out with version 10 or version 11. So you're getting the newest and greatest in the U6N. For storage, you have 5.9 gigs built into it. And if you look over here, we have an ambient mode. And this puts a screensaver on the television whenever you're not using it. And you can have a timer to turn that off at certain times. Plus you can customize it with the weather, uh, photos and things like that. Now a lot of people will like this feature. You can turn the LEDs off and on on the television. There's a sleep timer. You can also have the TV to turn itself on. But some phones don't allow you to send it directly with Wi-Fi Direct. But you'll have to play around with that with applications. If you have an iPhone or iPad, it has Apple AirPlay. And I really like the home kit so you can use Siri to control your lights as well as this television powering it on and things like that. And if you need to, you can see I have the remote control set up on the Bluetooth, but you can add headphones, speakers. But keep in mind when you add speakers, you might get a slight delay in the signal. Now we're gonna check the input lag for you gamers out there. Keep in mind, this is a 60 Hertz television and we're getting 9.9, 10 milliseconds. Let's make sure that's on right. And this TV is in gaming mode. So that's pretty respectful for a television to perform at that level. Now I have the PS5 up. Let's see what the TV can actually support. Well, in 4K mode, it will support variable refresh rate, HDR, and HDR, non-HDR up to 60 frames per second. I did a test earlier. If we go over to 1440p, you can see that it is something that you cannot use. So that's not going to be an option. But this is probably what you really want to know. If you go down to 1080p resolution on your gaming console, now it will support up to 120 hertz. And that is cool. The fact that this TV supports that, a lot of TVs will not. And you're still going to get HDR support as well. On the full review, we'll talk about the Xbox and see if it can do that in Dolby Vision mode. But for now, this is pretty rock solid. But here's what I really want to show you. If we click on the menu on the remote control, you can see it's in HDR game mode, but if we go over here to the side, this TV even has a game bar. I'm talking about a full blown game bar on a 60 Hertz television. And this is gonna give you a little panel here that shows you all the performance of the television. You have dark details, your brightness. You also have that crosshair that I mentioned on a lot of videos where you have this little square in the center. So you can adjust that for your different games to make sure that you are aiming in the right direction. Uh, you have a guide here and then there's even more settings. You have features like game console controller, PC sync. You also have um, the different picture sizes that you can adjust the television to. And you can control the speaker outputs as well as uh, some gaming genres down here at the bottom, as you can see right there. So this TV is fully loaded and ready for gaming. Speaking of soaring, get a load of that jump. There you have it, folks. The numbers are going through the roof. And we're back. Uh, so on this video, I decided not to go over the picture test and things like that because I really just want to get a feel for it so I can really dive into some the demos that I want to do on it to make sure how good this television is. But so far, it is a winner. The fact that it's 60 hertz is not a bad thing for me because right now you can buy this 65 inch for 650 bucks. There's not a lot of TVs that has everything that I showed you on this video so far for that kind of money. The fact it has local dimming zones, not a lot of them, but it has it. The fact that it has 
a uh, voice activated remote control. You can play games at 120 hertz at 1080p. It's got a gaming bar, Google operating system. What else could you ask for? So here's the thing. If you guys have questions about the full review, leave that in the comments below and I'll take a look at it. If it makes sense, I will add that to the video, but you need to act fast. The second thing is I am uh, starting a new TV forum to speak. It's called 4ktvchat.com. I'll leave the link in the description below. But if you have a problem with your television or if you want to share your experience with your audio system, uh, be sure to head over. It's a free membership. It's powered by Wix is a, a website. I bought it for three years so we can go in there and uh, share pictures of televisions, experiences, as well as uh, upload video clips. So with that being said, um, get ready for the full review. We're going to start filming right after this. Thanks all for watching. I'm Tech Steve. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. The goal is to hit 200,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.